Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News. This is a weekly BMX news show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week in the world of BMX that I think you might care about. And with that being said, let's get right into the news. The first thing that I wanna talk about today are a couple pieces of sponsorship news. The first of those being a Nico Cambin Welcome to Mutant Bikes video. And I am so happy that this video is the first video that we're gonna talk about this week because it was definitely one of my favorites of the week, if not my favorite. The style that Nico has in this video reminds me of Mike Mastroni and the creativity is real with this one. It's always awesome. Awesome to see creative riders getting the shine that they deserve and Nico absolutely kills it judging by this video. If you like creative spot usage and riding, this is definitely one that you're not going to want to miss this week. I will have links to it as well as everything else that we're going to be talking about today in the description below in the order that it's talked about. And with all of that being said, we can move on to the next piece of sponsorship news and it is another awesome welcome video and this one is for Emerson Morgan and Fit Bike Co is welcome to fit video. The first clip is a grind up a curved rail up some stairs to 180 that Emerson did with some serious steez. And judging from the rest of the video, he's the kind of rider that's enjoyable to watch just for the style that he puts into everything he does. And that just goes to show that a little bit of style can go a long way. And this video is so awesome to watch because Emerson has a lot a bit of style. And then after that, we had the news that Paul Paul Fallen is off of We The People and that Nike has dropped their entire European BMX team. This news came, I think, last week after I dropped last week's video or I just missed it. Something like that, whatever. Nike dropped Simone Baracco, Felix Prangenberg, Chris Kyle, Alex Kennedy, Daniel Tunte, and Moritz Nussbaumer, all from their European team. And this brings up the subject within BMX of outside sponsorship for riders, and there's a lot of people who seem like they're completely against it or at least speak out against it. Naturally, people get angry when an outside company comes into BMX, makes a team, and then cuts the entire program after a period of time. Nike isn't exactly an outside of BMX company because they had had this team for over 10 years, but it still brings up this topic and it's still something to talk about. And to the people who get angry when this happens and just say that there should be no outside support from big companies within BMX because they just greedy and they come in, they make these teams and they just drop the entire team over a period of time. To those people, I would ask, does anyone really expect to retire off of a sponsorship in general in BMX in 2018? Maybe back 20 years ago, it was possible to retire off of BMX because of the contest money and just the big sponsorship money that existed. But currently, does anyone expect to retire off of BMX? The answer, usually, unless you own a company or something crazy like that, or you're the best top rider in the world, the answer is no, you're not making enough money to retire off of BMX. These sponsorships obviously can't last forever, and one of the reasons why big companies don't last within BMX is because BMX as a whole can't bring a big enough return on a company's investment. And the goal of any company that has ever existed is to bring returns on their investments and make a profit so that they can survive as a company. If a company drops their entire BMX program, it probably means that that BMX program was not bringing enough of a return on the investment that that company was putting in. When you break it down, BMX company or not BMX company, having a team and having riders is an investment. So even if a BMX company has as riders, they're investing money into those riders to get the return on the investment so that they can sustain themselves as a company. That's the way that it works. And if they're not bringing enough of a return, then there's no reason to keep that BMX program around. So I feel like we might want to take a look at things from the perspective of these sponsorships can't last forever anyways because we can't ride forever. Maybe instead of being against outside sponsorship in general, we should at least consider being okay with people getting what they can, when they can, from who they can, and letting their morals decide those things while we realize that it's not going to ever last forever 
anyways. When it comes down to it, companies both within BMX and outside of BMX have to be able to justify their investments with returns on those investments and for whatever reason, BMX has never been able to last in these regards when it comes to outside companies. BMX barely can last when it comes to companies within BMX. Think of how many companies have been within BMX in the past 10 years that don't exist anymore because they haven't been able to survive for whatever the reason might have been. And that's gonna be it for sponsorship news for this week. After that, we've got one thing to talk about as far as contest and jam news goes. We had a highlight video from the FBM DIY BMX World stop number two come out last week. The second stop of FBM's DIY BMX Worlds went down in Narboro, North Carolina, and man, did it look like it was a blast. Backyard ramp like this one are almost always fun to ride and this one looks like it's no exception to that everyone absolutely killed it and there was some pretty crazy stuff that went down i did recognize one new philly guy that i've seen before doing a carving high five over this channel gap bridge type deal that they had the alley-oop three to fakie over the channel gap and the nose press 360 to fakie over the channel gap that won first and second for best trick were absolutely awesome. Also, stop number three is going down this weekend, tomorrow in Maryland. And after that, we can get into the videos from this week. The first is a dose of inspiration for your Friday in a video about a bionic leg BMX rider named Edson Perna. Edson is a BMX rider who was involved in a crazy accident that left him with his leg having to get amputated and this video is about that story and him as a BMX rider. It starts out with him talking about the accident and what led up to him losing his leg and then he goes into talking about his sponsorship and partnership with Bionis Center. This is what led him to be able to get a prosthetic that made riding much easier for him and then after that it goes into him riding for the rest of the video and in all this video is just such an inspiration to not let bad situations affect all other aspects of your life I mean this dude literally lost his leg and he didn't let it get him down and he just kept pushing and he got it to the point where he got the prosthetic and now he's riding and he's killing it too especially considering his situation if you need any sort of inspiration or you feel like your life is crappy or something's holding you back definitely watch this video as proof that nothing holds you back unless you let it and then after that in some more inspirational stuff we've got scotty kramer's first trick since his accident this video came out and i'm sure Sure, most of you watching this have already seen it but it's something that you've got to talk about because over a year and a half after his accident Scotty has done the first trick that he's done since his accident he did a double peg grind and it was just awesome to watch everything about his progression since his accident is always so great to see and it's just it's awesome to see people like Scotty and Edson who are just so positive in the face of these terrible terrible things and situations and it just goes to show that these things don't have to affect all aspects of your life or hold you back unless you just let them and that's the worst thing to do don't let bad situations hold you back and then from there, I want to talk about Bastion Roberts' new video. The first thing I want to say is that well-rounded riders are always awesome to see, especially whenever they put out a well-rounded video to go along with their well-rounded riding. This video has a good mix of both park and street in it, and it's all good stuff. There is a bar to table to fakey on a quarter pipe in here that is just completely wild and Bastion made it look great. After that, we've got a video called Fixate from Max Heitman. The first thing that I wanna say about this video is actually a question for you guys in, have you ever seen someone grind a ledge into a Vader slide? 
Me either. Max does a couple of them in this video and they're seriously awesome tricks. He also rounds it out with a bunch more awesome grind moves and some serious back wheel balance. This one is honestly worth watching just to see the ledge grind to Vader slides. After that, I wanna talk about a full length video that was dropped this week. And if you follow BMX whatsoever, you probably already know about it. It's that BMX Foos Foo 666 was dropped on Wednesday. This one's just over an hour long and I actually watched the entire thing. It's completely awesome and I'm not just saying that and I didn't just watch it because I have a couple clips in it. Charlie Crumlish is the main person behind this video and while his editing style might be on the edge, it's still enjoyable by just about anyone and there are some seriously amazing parts in this video. Sean Swain has what, if I'm remembering correctly, is the very first part of the video and it is seriously mind-blowing. The clip that keeps standing out in my head is a fakey Ruben wall ride to a no-footed can one-hander off of a sidewalk. So he does the fakey Ruben on a street spot, comes down from it, and then does a completely extended no-footed can one-hander, a trick that you normally only see in the trails or on a big box jump, and that you would think would take a lot of time, but apparently doesn't because Sean Sean does one fully extended and perfect off of a sidewalk that's, you know, like this big completely insane. Honestly, this part alone is worth clicking on the video for just to see it. And once you do that, you're going to get sucked into the rest of the video. There's parts from Charlie, Eli Taylor, Craig Passero, and I actually have a couple clips around the 38, 39 minute mark. If you care about that at all, check out the video. It's definitely worth watching. And with that being said, that's going to be it for the videos that I want to talk in depth about this week. But as always, there's a few more that are worth mentioning so let's run through those right now. The first one is Jay Crawley at La Palma Bike Park from GT, Brian Kaczynski and Sullivan Gwainsetter from GT, Ben Wallace and Paul Ryan switching bikes from Ride, then Mark Burnett's Field Notes in Florida from Shadow, followed by Morning Exercise with Jordan Goodwin, a Daniel Tunte 2017-2018 video, a Drop the Pin with Nate Richter from from Ride, and then a Flatland video from Alberta Moya called In Crescendo, and that's it for the videos that I want to talk about this week. After that, we had a bunch of quickie check it out if you care news in the form of a bunch of bike checks, so it might actually be longy check it out if you care news this time. The first one is a What I Ride from Ride BMX with Dylan McCulley. Then we had a Mark Mulville bike check from Profile, followed by a Joris Colomb bike check from Sabrosa and then a Brock Rayford bike check from Volume. And then we had some product news to talk about this week. The first one isn't a new product or anything like that. It's actually a chance to win some product from Strictly BMX. It's a chance to win a full custom colony bike. So the way that you can win this is if you spend $100 or more within the month of June with Strictly BMX. This one mostly applies to all you Australians out there and I know that there's at least a few of you that watch this. So at the very least, this means that BMX news is international, right? Then I wanna talk about episode three of Profile Racing's From the Dungeon series. This one is about the first 19 millimeter 40 eight spline spindles and in this video the owner of profile racing jim talks about the way that they actually made the first ever 19 millimeter 48 spline spindles for their cranks and if you didn't know it profile actually invented the 48 spline system and they did so based on something that they used in steering columns for race cars pretty crazy stuff this one shows the way that they made the very first ones and from the way that jim described it and he literally said it was a very labor intensive process which is clearly seen in the machinery and all of the stuff that he talked about with it it's so awesome to see this series and to learn about all of these things from the history of profile they've literally been around for 50 years a bmx company being around for 50 years 
years. Amazing. I can't wait to see the next episode. And the last thing to talk about as far as product goes is that Shadow's Spring and Summer 2018 apparel was released this week. After that, I'm going to make a new segment in this video. I don't know how permanent it's going to be because it might not have something every single week, but so far that's been the case, and that is a segment for interview type videos. The first one was an X Games Real BMX interview with Stu Johnson. If you're interested in hearing some of the behind the scenes on the X Games Real BMX contest from some of the people who helped make it happen, this is definitely one that you're gonna wanna check out because it does just that. The only thing that I wanna say about this interview that's bad is that by the end of it, it left me wishing there was more of it and that it was longer. Then from there, we can talk about the Rollback podcast from Vital BMX with Daniel Dares. This one is just not what I thought I was going to get into. I listened to the entire thing and there are so many crazy stories in here from Daniel Dares. You wouldn't know it by seeing his riding now, but the place that he came from is so crazy. And to hear some of the stories and just hear him talk about how hard it was to get bike parts where he was at and hear him talk about how he had a friend who took a garden hose and cut it in half and lined his tires with it so that he'd be less likely to get a flat. It's just crazy. That's the only word that can describe it and it doesn't get any less crazy crazy from the very beginning to the very end of this podcast. If you don't know anything about Daniel Dares, even if you do and you haven't heard stories about where he came from, this is a great one to check out and I absolutely recommend it. After that, we had a Hanging with Labs, this time with Stephen Murray. Just another one that's 100% worth checking out and I can't recommend these behind the scenes interview type videos enough. Then from there, we had an article called Is Brody Gwilliam the Best Farmer in BMX? Yes, the answer is yes, 100%. If you haven't heard of Brody Gwilliam, look up his Bush League videos. I'll actually put a link to the most recent one in the description below. Go check it out. This dude literally turns his farm into a street plaza, basically. He goes out and he finds stuff to ride, whether it's farm equipment or just stuff that's around that has to do with his farm. And this interview is kind of talking about that and just all kinds of other aspects of BMX. Brody has been killing it for as long as I've seen him on the internet, which has been quite a while now. I read the entire interview, and if you've heard of him at all, or you've seen any of his Bush League videos, or you check one out after watching this, it's definitely worth the read. And as always, it's just great to get to know riders for more than their riding and hear about them behind the scenes. Then we had another Your Favorite Rider's Favorite Rider from Ride, this time with Ty Morrow, and we had Dakota Roach on the Nine Club podcast. If you didn't know, in a previous Nine Club podcast, one of the guys on there, Kelly, talked pretty harshly about BMX, so much so that they had Dakota Roach on to talk about the situation. It ended up being fine, and they had some really great conversation. It just kind of seemed like the dude got heated and said a few things that he might might not necessarily had wanted the entire world to have access to, but that's kind of what's so awesome about podcasts. And from what I gathered, it seems like for the most part, BMX riders and skateboarders coexist and get along very well in most everywhere. There's just a few places where there's still some tension. So hopefully with this podcast and the reach that it actually has, we can bridge that gap a little bit more and maybe help those situations in those places at least a little bit. Plus, it's over an hour of conversation with Dakota Roach, so that's just awesome in general to have. It's a very long podcast, so Dakota Roach's part starts about the 46-minute mark into the podcast. That's where they start talking about BMX, and then they bring him in just a couple minutes later. And with that being said, that's everything that I had to talk about today as far as BMX news goes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comments comments down below. What was your favorite story? What did you think about things? What do you think about outside sponsorship within BMX? And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button down below as well. I try to come out with these BMX news videos every Friday at or before 4 p.m. Eastern time with Tip Tuesday videos on Tuesdays and other types of riding videos throughout the week. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.